You're listening to Working Forward, a future of work focused podcast from People Forward Network. These episodes pave the road ahead, helping us confidently step into the future as a leader who moves people forward. Let's go. I'm Nikki Llewellyn Gregory, host of Dream Chase and Lead Others to Dream. It's a series on Working Forward. I sat down with our producer to share my personal why for creating this series. You'll hear how my journey and previous experiences brought me to where I am today and get a sneak peek of what you can expect from future episodes on this series around dreaming. I'd love to connect with you. Find me on LinkedIn, and I'm so excited for this new journey. And welcome to another episode of Working Forward. Today, today my guest is Nikki Llewellyn Gregory, and you are the Chief Meaningful Work Officer at People Forward Network. Now, time out. I love titles. Titles are always great, and I love creative titles. Tell me a little bit about Chief Meaningful Work Officer. What does that mean? Nikki, welcome. Yeah, thank you, Sean. So I got to make it up myself. Uh, it ties right into you know the the passion that I have for the work that we do and the mission that we live for every day at People Forward Network, which is to help all people experience meaningful work. I've had a trend in my life of all of my work that I do uh, really rolls up under this umbrella of helping people feel that they're making a strong contribution in the workplace and that they're getting fulfilled and energized by it. So, in other words employee engagement. And at People Forward Network, um, we get to wake up every day and serve the cause of helping people experience meaningful work. Yeah. And I, I love the title. I think that words matter, you know, word, words matter. And when you put something like chief meaningful work officer, it really kind of starts this whole conversation off on the right foot because it tells me what your values are, what's important to you. And I want to get to how you like got to this position because I know that, you know, everybody has this journey and I know, you know, mine's been like trying to explain mine is always fun, but I would love to kind of hear your journey. Like what got you into this space of being the chief meaningful work officer there at people forward network? Yeah. Well, I'll tell a very simplified version. And I think we have another podcast episode that explains it a little bit more because I'm like, well, let me take you back to when <laughs> I was three. No. Okay. So um, I will, I will share quickly, you know, through my, you know, school times up until college, I was never one of those that like loved school. It was like, you know, I like my friends more and hanging out and having fun more. But then college was coming up and uh, my parents were like, what the heck are you going to do with your life? So I go see a counselor uh, to help me with my career journey. Right. And they defined that I could be a great therapist to help other people, you know, advance their lives or whatever. Well, the thing that rung true that now I know about myself is I love to contribute to other people and help other people. Um, and so that seemed like a great fit, went down that path, undergrad, graduate degree, come out as a, you know, master's in mental health while I just got hired at my last internship, the last inter internship during college. And the lady that owned the company, it was a entrepreneurial company, maybe 35 employees. It was an employee assistance program, like a employee benefit, um, and the lady said, hey, now that we have gone through your internship and we've hired you, I just want to see, would you be open to doing other things besides therapy? And I'm thinking like, I mean, I just got done with this you know, long, long journey in school. And she said, because I've seen, I know a lot of like assessments and I know how to like help, you, help people get on the right path. I've seen that you're really wired for like entrepreneurial efforts or sales. And I'm like, what? And I'm thinking like, this is a knock. Like, I don't know anybody in sales. And I think sales is like a bad word, you know, at that point. But it ended up showing me that there was such an opportunity for me to really match my like God-given strengths in that. And so I started down the sales path and got some training and things. But I found I was so passionate about that employee assistance program, that EAP company, because the people who bought, those leaders who bought that service totally cared about their people. It was so different to me. I never had seen that in my life before. Like you're going through a divorce, you lost a, a parent or something, and we're going to pay to help you get back on track. And it set me on this trajectory of like, my work will always be around investing and helping people in the workplace to get better, to feel that they're contributing 
a number of things happened, but this is the part that you'll appreciate is six years ago was working with an employee engagement engagement software company leading partnerships. And we found podcasting as a tool and someone had recommended to us, Rachel, a you know, producer I've worked with for a long time in podcasting. She said, what if a podcast could help you reach these big goals to get to this next level of client that you're looking for? She's like, build a list of like your top 50 most wanted clients. And let's see if we can do that with podcasting. Tell stories about amazing workplaces and great leaders. And the button on that in this very Cliff Notes version is it worked really well. And podcasting has taken over. It's the greatest platform to storytell and to truly build relationships with people and People Forward Network is born now. We're in our fourth year um, and the journey continues. I mean, you're hitting on that that thread that pulls us all together, you know, and and that is that interest in the human condition, the, you know, the, the empathetic piece of emotions that bring us to where we are and the decisions that we make. And and ultimately, I think, you know, you and I are in the same space with the, the podcasting being such a great medium to do that. Visual is, is wonderful, but my goodness, you know, the things that you can do with audio. Oh yeah. Your energy is amazing. And I'm almost afraid to ask this next, next question, but I have to, <laughs> what fires you up most? Like if you can say just one thing that really gets you fired up about what you do, what would it be? Results. Ah, there you go. Tell me more about that. So I believe that the way that we, um, the best way to get anything accomplished just through our relationships. So if I'm going to go start a new marketing campaign, I'm never going to go build a, you know, a big marketing list and sell, you know, advertising or whatever. There's times and spaces for advertising, but the key relationships in your life are what's going to get you there. I believe that any problem you have at home with your kids or a challenge, something's broken, someone is going to help you get a connection to this other person that's going to solve that. And, and so through relationships, it's like podcasting is a platform that helps build relationships. And through relationships, you can create great results when you're focused and strategic together. And so I get so excited when I can help people who are doing things they love, but can't get to the result place that they want, see the path and get the results. Yeah. That's what fires me up. Yeah. And, and, and you get to you know sit there and, and help celebrate in that success. And is yes. it, isn't that cool? <laughs> it is. Uh, it is. So was it this six year ago, four year ago period that you kind of really knew that this was going to be the the space that you wanted to to plant your feet firmly in or, or when did that happen for you? Like, when did you kind of realize this was going to be it? Yeah. So six years ago, I started this podcasting journey and was having so much fun. And six months in, and Sean, you'll appreciate this because you're in this space. Anybody else listening, I don't know how much you get this, what I'm about to say. Uh, but six years ago, started down the podcasting path, never had done it before. We get some sponsorship dollars to try this six months engagement. And the six month engagement had to prove results on the pipeline. Okay. Very rarely will that happen. I've never actually seen it again happen. Right. But I believe that it was my higher power, my God, like telling me, like, keep going because like this works. So within six months, we closed one of those top 50 that we were working on to build a relationship and like not even salesy. Like we don't, I'm not a say like I'm not a salesy person. Right. It's like, how do we build solutions to solve problems and 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 reach dreams, which we're about to talk about? And so that was like, keep going. And we got more sponsorship dollars, obviously. And I've never seen it done that fast again, but the point is wow. it was working. And so then we're in our fourth year with People Forward Network. We just celebrated our third birthday. I would say just just three and a half years ago, it was like nudging on me. No, yeah, probably about three and a half years ago because Stephanie joined me before the company started, six months before the company started, basically. And Stephanie Hicks is my show manager for... Uh, Gut Plus Science and my other podcast, Addicted to Betterment, but also is our head of podcast success at People Forward Network. We worked together in the past. So it was so cool to bring a relationship that we'd worked together for five years before in another world to come back together. So I would say, Sean, a little over three and a half years ago is when I was like, I can't let this opportunity sit on the table. Like, this is something that could be incredible. And it's proven true. It hasn't been beautiful the whole time. We've had some rocky roads, but it, it's pretty beautiful right now. Is there like a moment where, you know, as this was happening, like that 
one moment where you remember the the switch clicked for you and you said that that this is it i like i'm going to do this you know right right or die it's going to happen <laughs> was there a yeah. moment for you what what was that like um it was me not living my truth of spending my time doing something that was sucking some of my soul and i was like i am such a hypocrite like, I can't keep doing this. I, I was doing something that if I was like, scale of one to 10, how fulfilling is this? A solid six, which for some people is fine. For me, I couldn't do that. And I was like, I, I, I have to be true to myself. And I remember days of complaining to my husband about some like feeling miserable about this or like not wanting to do this. And I just, I was listening to myself outside of myself. And I'm like, this, something has to change and you need to take the risk and you need to commit. So true. I, I get it. And it's, you know, I think that there are so many people that I have encountered in my, in my life, in my, in my personal life, my professional life that, you know, they, they hear that happening within their own, you know, mind, but yeah, it's like taking that next step of action yeah. and, and putting your fear aside. And I don't even want to say putting your fear aside because we really don't put our fear aside. We just, I, I would say, hopefully that we just kind of just barrel through it. <laughs> yeah. We're always afraid of the unknown and so on and so forth. So throughout this whole process, I am going to take a guess that there have been some pretty profound leadership experiences and lessons and things that have, have really, you know, uncovered themselves for you. Can you maybe dive into one or two of those and just kind of, you know, share a little bit of those uh, antidotes and, and maybe what, you know, you took out of that experience? Mm -hmm. Two things come to mind. One is go with my gut or my intuition or what I know is true. I, I How many times have I been like, I knew it. Like, And mm. it's like, if I just would have done it when I knew it. Verse, and so I really tried to be as spiritually guided and like connected to myself in decision making as possible um, because I've learned so many times, you know, I feel like a lot of us have, I just committed. I'm like, stop it. Um, and so really being guided by making sure that my gut and my soul feels right about something or not right or whatever. The other is do it now. So I have a practice of like, just do it right now. Just do it now. Take the step, do it, do it, do it. Like very action oriented. Um, this year I took the strengths assessment, like strengths finder, you know, Clifton strengths, Gallup tool. My number one out of 34 strengths is activator. And I just realized like, once I looked at that, it's like, sometimes you do these tools and you're like, Oh, that makes sense. I was like, that is my gift. Like, and so I know that like when I do that and when I teach other people around me to do that, the opposite life is like, oh my gosh, my to-do list has 46 things on it just from today. I'm like, but what if I just took two minutes? What if I built in a gap and just do it now? Like, get this done. And like, of course, some things hit the to-do list, but lots of things don't need to. Like, just, just take the action. While we're on the meeting, let's take the next step. Let's schedule the meeting. Like, And then things aren't dropping and, and taking action. So yeah, go with my gut, trust it, and and just take action now. Do it. I think the the go with my gut thing is the one of the biggest things that keep people away from doing what they want to or need to do. And yeah. I'd, I'd love to dive into that for a minute because there's a lot to be said about, you know, confronting the unknown, confronting fear. Um, and and I, I'm going to go on a whole thing here before I say this question. But, you know, when we look at even anxiety over what might be considered common tasks, common daily tasks, but people can have overwhelming anxiety over doing those things. What are your thoughts about, you know, as we said, pushing through that, not conquering fear necessarily right off the bat, but just pushing through that anxiety, pushing through that fear, pushing through the unknown to the other side. Three things come to mind. One is I think you you have to have something bigger than yourself in your life that brings you peace. So, you know, who is your God? Who is your universe? Who, you know, something that is guiding you bigger that provides that peace. Like we aren't meant to do it on our own. No fear all by yourself, right? I think the other is you have to have a daily practice for yourself. Call it a morning routine. Whenever you do this, I, I would say earlier in the day is better to get yourself prepared and in the right headspace is really important. 
I don't know what I, I think of the days if I like wake up late or, you know, I have to be somewhere super early and I don't have that time to get grounded and centered. I'm a mess. Like, mm, I'm yeah. like, I was a shit show today, you know, uh, just a complete mess. So that and then the other is and this is the biggest one. I don't know if it's the biggest one, but it's a big one to know why you're here, your purpose and to know yourself eliminates a lot of that anxiety and fear because you're like i am being guided by what i know is true for why i'm here it's easier for me to flow and so all things come together when we know our purpose and our why and we're we're walking in that yeah absolutely i love the fact that you know as we as we confront some of these things that we we talk about your journey here that we're able to kind of address the fact that you know you and i even in this conversation, just the two of us can so much relate to that. And that tells me that, you know, a lot of other people can too. Like this is, this is such a common thing. And I think it's one of the, you know, the, that fear of moving forward is what keeps people from accomplishing the things that they want to accomplish. When you think about all of the contributing factors to a great day, what would those look like? What kind of things are happening for you? What kind of work are you involved in? Um, what's making it great? Yeah, I think being around great people, you know, it's it, the energy of other people. A lot of times I'm working virtually and so on a screen's fine for me. Like I I feed off of energy and uh whatever dynamic, but it's the person and so being around great people, collaborating. I always feel best when I am guiding someone to a next step. Again, going back to like the action side where they're like, oh my gosh, like I see it now. I know what the next step is. And I'm like, great. Like we got there and they're, they're, they're getting thinking bigger and they help us put those pieces. And then it's like, I'm helping to put it into action. So strategy, innovation, I'm not a details person. So like, it's, it's just very much like thinking and planning, but also like, what are the next steps and being able to hand that over to a project manager? Like that's, that's my best use of self working with great people. I'm a foodie. I love great food. I love a great cocktail. Um, you know, being in a work environment that like other people can get this probably like a coffee shop with great vibes, just like good people around. You got like the good music, coffee shop vibes, Love that. I am active. I try every single day to close my rings on my watch. And so just getting out, going for a walk if it's nice, heading to the gym, doing a workout class and spending time with friends and, and my husband, like my husband, and my dog. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, that's a lot for a day, but that looks like a typical day. That, that is, but like I said, at the start of this, I can feel your energy. And I love that about you. I, I think that anyone listening to you talk right now again, the great medium of audio can feel that it translates so well. Awesome. Let's kind of shift here a little bit because you are going to be one of the hosts of Working Forward, this podcast that we're on. Yes. And I, I want to talk a little bit about that and, and understand a little bit about your perspective. So first of all, Working Forward, we're you know really focused on helping leaders navigate the future of work. Yes. Why is this an important project for you? Yeah, I it comes up a lot in conversation with leaders. I don't I don't know what to prioritize because there's so many things. Asking questions about okay, AI and there's 14 different things that I've been told or two different tools just in that little niche space, just AI, let alone like how we hire people today and how do we embrace the gig economy? Shoot, look at the world and every day there's, you know, warning signs about things and like how do we keep going, but also keep our people at, at peace about what it is and take next business steps. Goodness gracious. So it's like working forward was born because a lot of people are anxious, uh, seeking input. And we have so many great contributors. What they do every day is to, to study this stuff. So if they can package it up in Cliff Notes version episodes that help these leaders feel more calm and have a steps on what to do like that that's where it came from and sean you and i have been talking about this show for a while i didn't even think for two seconds i was going to be part of this until our team got together and we were talking about a, a niche area of something i'm really passionate about and then somebody on my team said i think that should be a working forward series and i was like oh 
oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. So it kind of organically came to bring this series to life. Yeah. And since you are, you know, kind of the, the behind the scenes, uh, you know, People Forward Network is, is the behind the scenes founder of Working Forward Podcast. Can you give people a little bit of context as to what these episodes will look like because we've got different hosts and and it's all kind of bundled under people forward network so how does this all play out for the the listener yeah so this show you can go to peoplefowardnetwork.com and you can see all of our shows some of the shows are network originals meaning our team and our extended team like you sean producers and specialists in podcasting help to create this show and we own it and go and find contributors. And it is really important for us to have a diverse group of people from every aspect, like these contributors, which we call um, content partners that own these different series, like I'm one of them, are going to be diverse from different places all around the globe. One of the people that we have on this on this show their time zone is 12 hours different. So it's like, we have to be really wow. scalable and and make this process easy because we're probably not gonna be like talking live you know, with you. And so to be able to, to create all of that because we're bringing in leaders from all around the world, you know, that are different, that look different, that are from different places, that have different niche areas of interest and backgrounds. And that's really important. And we'll continue to recruit different content partners. So if you're somebody that's listening right now and you're like, hey, that might be me. Hey, reach out. Let's talk. But it's really important to bring all of those diverse angles and people to the table. Yeah. And I, I really appreciate you sharing that because I think conceptually, this is a really cool podcast idea. And I think bringing you know, from around the globe, bringing these different voices, different perspectives is completely invaluable. Uh, can't say enough for that. So your spot on this show, what can our audience expect to hear from your episodes? What can they learn from your episodes? Yeah. So we're going to be leading people to dream. That's what this series is going to be about. And when I think, how does that apply to future of work? Well, in order to attract and keep talent and make a significant impact on them, something really unique that we can do through the workplace is help people accomplish their dreams. And how many times have I heard people say, I don't even have a dream. What do you mean? And it's like, you have a dream. Right. Like there are dreams inside of there. So whether it is, I can't even think of a dream because I haven't defined one, or I am so fearful to even try that, or I, yeah, I gave up because I've thought about it so many times. I'm just stuck, whatever that is. We're going to help to unlock that, to help you get more clear on what is that dream and how to take action on that. Life is short and everybody will have regrets on things that they didn't do. No one's going to have a regret on something they did do. That's That was dream oriented, right? Like you're like, oh, I tried that dream, but it didn't work. Like, kudos, like good job, like keep going. And so to inspire people to take action and life is short, let's get going. And the show's going to walk us through, you know, overcoming blockers and knowing how to define a dream, a dream and get crystal clear and then how to build an action plan on that. So we'll be addressing things like what keeps you from dreaming? Believe you can create a crystal clear vision, share your dreams with others, create an action plan, celebrate it, celebrate the steps, things like that. I'm really jacked about it. Uh, very cool. Very exciting. And I am just honored to be a part of it. And uh, I think that this is going to be a fun, fun show for everyone listening. Nikki Llewellyn Gregory, first of all, thank you for everything that you do and you are doing. And thank you for being my guest today. Thank you, Sean. We really enjoy working with you. I was just talking to Stephanie earlier and she was saying, oh my gosh, we've got this process flowing. We at People Forward Network absolutely love working with you, Sean. And thank you for the time today. Thank you. Thanks for tuning into Working Forward. If you like what you hear, please share it with others and make sure you're following the show to not miss an episode. We are available anywhere you get your audio. See you next time.